You know, in the 60s, there was, uh, it seemed like all the British bands that had at least one member that uh, either came out of art school or went to the London School of Economics or something like that. Uh, well, in Halifax, that school would be the Nova Scotia College of Art and Design, or uh, NASCAD, where a lot of band members uh, from the Halifax music scene uh, went at one point or are currently going. So a couple of people finally, Captain Stockhausen and Lewis Pierce uh, specifically, decided it'd be a good idea to get together an exhibition that would point out the symbiosis between the art college and the music scene here in Halifax. So they put together a very cool show called Snapped Crackling Pop. probably three months. Three months. Three yeah. months. Um, the majority of collecting has happened in the last week. <laughs> uh, uh, with about eight, and the, the other 50% of the rest of that in the week before that, and then yeah. other scroungings and things came along it in the months out, before that. It started out with a lot of talking and, and conceptualizing, and we should do this and this and this, and then all of a sudden it was time to do it, and it's been kind of hectic. A lot of the first meetings that we had were about it. We're just not writing down everybody we knew who had yeah. stuff. And then when we'd mention it to them, they would suggest other people and other people and other people and so on. There's still things that we could have, would have liked to get, but can't really think about that too much mm -hmm. now. There's a lot of stuff I'd never seen, mainly stuff pre-87 or something. Um, we got uh, gig flyers from the late 70s, which is pretty cool. Um, and there's some, some novelty stuff, some stuff we hope doesn't get stolen. Not everybody who's in the show is necessarily a Nova Scotia College of Art and Design graduate. Probably about 75% of the people are connected to the art college in some way or another. But I think the real thing that, well, one of the things we were trying to, to drive home was the idea that the NASCAD's influence on Halifax and on the cultural life of Halifax has been exceptional and has influenced the music scene in, 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 in direct and indirect ways for a really long time. And, and there's a lot of artists living in this city and a lot of them are also musicians. Uh, most fans around here, the musicians, oversee their artwork and videos completely um, or use NASCAD students as a resource. Um, it's a real, uh, everyone does it for themselves here um, and uses their friends. And there's just artists everywhere. But there's a lot of artists in this town, a lot of young people who are associated with both the music scene and the art college scene. There's people who, I think, take what they're doing seriously enough, in a good way, to, to uh, think they consider themselves artists on some, on some level. So it's not just about throwing stuff together just because they can, although that's part of it. It's also like, yeah, I can make it. I can make a good picture, sure. Well, the original four members of jail all went here at the same time, met each other, decided to form a band. Um, Chris Murphy and Andrew Scott of Sloan uh, went here. Lucas from Rebecca West. Yeah. Um, the Chinstraps, which is uh, Mike Lewis and Kevin Lewis, both go here or went. Mm -hmm. Bands that are 10, 15 years old are were mainly all NASCAD all students. And often because there were less reliable places to play, less venues that housed live music in this town, the Art College offered a venue for things that weren't cover bands and weren't blues bands. Things like the Null Sesh and the Trash Cans and the Phoenix and stuff like that through the 80s. Some of which is really excellent music still today. The first lucky 50 people who got here today got a copy of the Null Set record, which is it's a great record. It's, um, it's, it's sort of like new wave Perubu with experimental wah guitar. It's, it's really nifty and it's not maybe what you'd expect coming from a small maritime town in 1979. We didn't really want to have bands playing at the opening because it might get in the way of the videos and stuff that people are seeing, because there's a lot of videos to be seen. I think that's that's one of the things that I've found most surprising in this whole thing, is getting to see 30-odd videos all together. In, and they're one. all, the videos are all for music Halifax fans, but also all the directors are from Halifax as well. That's 
That's the one rule we had about the show. Everything in there was made by a Haligonian, whether born or living here at the time, going to the school. Um, it's 100% Halifax. Created. Halifax and surrounding areas. Dartmouth. Dartmouth. Super City. Yeah, it's not about the music. It's about the, it's, it's not about it's about the design. It's about the art and all that that accompanies it. Because there's lots of things that that were had really perfectly good. Um, musical examples and visual examples of things but the people who made them didn't kind of fit into our conceptual criteria which is about showing off the the art and design of the halifax music scene of people who've been make, living and creating and making those things in halifax well that's about all the time you have left for this week i hope you enjoyed yourself i know i certainly